Hello, my writing pals and my reading pals. It's me, your girl, Xana, and today I am showing off just how much self-control I don't have. Earlier this week, I had to travel to a kind of nearby city for a doctor's appointment, schedule a procedure, yada yay, yada you. That city happened to have a Barnes & Noble, and I happened to have, as we've established, no self-control. So uh, I went and I got some books and some other kind of bookish related things. And when I got back, I was like, you know, I have a couple of other books that I've gotten recently that I haven't really talked about. So it's book haul time. But before we jump into all of that, Hello, my name is Xana Renee. I am a writer here on the YouTubes where I upload videos consistently once a week on Friday and occasionally another video before Friday. Uh, you can find me on social media. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all at Xana's Books. You can catch me on TikTok at WitchDrZana and you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Books. My patrons over on my Patreon exclusive Discord want more friends and they told me to push it a little bit more even though I, I hate like marketing myself they're like suck it up we want more friends so um i'm trying guys i'm doing my best for you i think that's everything about me except for the fact that i have a collection of short stories and poems coming out later this year it's titled through the violet redwoods and it has a focus on the darker emotions and how we get through them sometimes good sometimes bad I like the collection. I think it is fun. I mean, I wrote it, so I kind of have to like it, even though I kind of hate reading it at this point. But other people really like reading it, so like, hey, there's that. First up, we have Song of the Forever Rains by E.J. Mallow, a dark fantasy romance following Larkra, the youngest of the Mosai sisters, as she embarks on her first journey, her first mission. Larkra's power is that when she sings, she can slay monsters, and she's gonna have to learn to find hope in her powers of destruction as she goes forth to kill the duke that is poisoning the people and maybe falling in love along the way and finding out that sometimes people have good intentions but for the wrong reasons. Possibly, maybe, we'll see. Those are kind of the, the synopsis that I put together after, you know, looking at the back of the book and on Amazon and things like that. Welcome to the world of Adalar, where lords and ladies can be murderers and thieves, and the most alluring notes can often be the deadliest. Dare to listen? That's nice. That's cool. What drew me to this book was that I follow EJ Mello on Instagram. Her photos are stunning. She does an amazing job. She just had a baby recently. Her baby is adorable. Oh my goodness. I saw the cover. I heard that it had to do with music and I, I knew I was going to get it. And then the pre-order went up and they said that when people pre-ordered, they could get this really pretty pen. Like, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to get a really good picture of it, but it says, beware when the songbird sings, which I think is kind of like the tag of the book. And I was a music major for two years. I love music. I love books that have to do with music. So knowing that this was a dark fantasy, that it had romance, that it, music, just everything. Oh, I was in love with the idea of it. It sounds wonderful. Sounds. <laughs> sounds. It sounds wonderful. The cover is gorgeous. I really love the cover artist for this book. I forget their name right off the top of my head, but I've got them saved on my Instagram and I like looking at the covers that they do because they're gorgeous. Anywho, Song of the Forever Rains. I am super looking forward to reading this book. I think it's going to be great. I think it's also technically general fantasy, which means Adult, if you do not know, adult doesn't necessarily just mean like steamy with adult content. It is just general fiction. So I'm excited to like start working more into the world of adult and kind of leaving YA a little bit. Uh, I just have problems with adult content happening in YA. Not that I look for adult content anyways, but that's a whole spiel that I've written several papers on that I don't need to talk about here right now. The Song of the Forever Rains, first book I got. I didn't get that at Barnes and Noble. I got that like I said, I pre-ordered that when pre-orders went up back in like June or something like that. Into the Barnes & Noble books. First up we have Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan. This follows three people as they have to bend together to kill the king to stop a war. It gives me kind of like Castlevania vibes just from reading the back. It is apparently Slavic inspired with church ruins and superstition everywhere. It sounds really good. So we follow a girl who can speak and listen to the gods, either one or the other or both. A prince who doesn't know how to trust in a boy with a monstrous dark secret. I like myself a ragtag team of misfits who are on adventures and, you know, 
the line of uh, kill the king to save the kingdom reminds me of the song Storm the Castle by Jonathan Young. I love Jonathan Young. Jonathan Young, if you're watching this, which you probably aren't, but I know he's like, hi, I like your music. Anywho, uh, Wicked King, Wicked, King, Wicked Saints came out a couple of years ago. I think this is part of a trilogy. I don't know how many of the books are out now, but I finally picked up myself a, I finally picked up myself. I finally picked up a copy of Wicked Saints for myself. I've wanted one for a couple years. I figured I saw it. It, it isn't that much. It's $10.99 and I figured why not bring it home with me? So I did. Following the trend of Wicked Things, we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Monsacalo. This is a YA dark fantasy taking place in Sicily, Italy, and we follow Emilia as she is looking to avenge her twin sister's murder with none other than Wrath himself on her side. This book is filled with suspicion and mystery and intrigue, so Emilia has to keep the secret that she and her sister are witches, or witches in her sister's case, and she's got to figure out how to keep her secret to keep alive and how to figure out how to solve the death of her twin sister. The book, it looks okay. I think the cover looks really good, like, at first glance. I haven't been a big, huge fan of the, like, skull and snake trend, but then I, like, took a closer look and the fangs on this snake are totally jank. Like, look at that. That's not, that's not how fangs work. Well, I can, I can look past that small little detail. Uh, the book sounds really good. I am excited to read it. I've heard a lot of people talking about it online. I've heard like a few mixed things about it, but I'm not sure. I am not really one to look at reviews before buying a book. I don't know if that's weird or not. I kind of like looking at a summary, looking at things and forming an opinion myself because a lot of times people leave reviews and it's from a very like a personal point of view like they they personally don't like something so they take that as a slight against a book if i usually come up against something i personally don't like in a book unless it is like is detrimental to the plot or characters or something like that like it impacts the story in a negative way that like isn't good writing or something i'll bring it up but if it's just something i personally don't like i usually leave it out of a review or I'll make note of it in a review, but keep it out of my star rating. I don't know, that's just how I personally like leaving reviews. And so I've read some reviews for books in the past that have kind of been like, oh, this book sucks, and I didn't end up picking it up. And then I kind of thought to myself, well, maybe, ow! This book just tried to hurt me. Okay. I'm like sticking up for you. And this is what I get. Anyways. I'm excited to read it. This is the only hardback I have today, so I'll show you the naked book. It is black and purple with kind of a champagne colored emboss. It, I really like how much of a soft gold it is. It's not silver, it's not gold. Like I said, it's more of a champagne-y gold. I think it's really pretty. Uh, I think recently I've seen a lot, like more of a spectrum of colors on a book's spine other than just gold or silver. Like Alexa Dunn's The Ivies is white and I think that's really interesting. This is champagne. It's really pretty. Moving on to the next book, we have Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I watched the movie as a kid, we'll still watch it occasionally, and I really like it. I remember the movie being extremely cute and really liking it and I figured why not pick up the book. In the book, we follow Tristan Trevor. Tristan Trost. What's your name, buddy? Tell me your name. Thorin. Thorin. Tristan Thorin. I was so not close. I at least knew his first name. And we follow him as he is trying to win the cold heart of the beautiful Victoria. And in order to prove his love for her, he has said that he will go across the ancient wall that no one goes across to catch and bring back a falling star. And as he crosses the wall, he enters into the world of fairy and all sorts of things happen. He meets all sorts of people and he works to figure out which world he thinks he belongs in and if he is finally feeling love for the first time. It's not too thick a read. I am really excited. Uh, this is a YA uh, steampunk fantasy. This, I believe, was published in 1999. That is kind of before the rebirth of YA in 2005. YA was kind of a thing before that, but it really took off in 2005 before that. 
this probably would have just been published in general fiction so this might be listed as adult in some places even though I'm pretty sure this is kind of like a bedtime story-esque kind of story that's at least how the movie felt haven't read the book yet have the book now we'll read it we'll form an opinion on what category I think it belongs in all right I got one more book it's an ebook it's technically two books but I'm only going to talk about one book it is An Air Comes to Rise by C.C. Penarada I bought book one and book two I'm only going to talk about book one because I don't read the description of book two before I read book one because that would be a mistake that I've accidentally made before and I like ruined a book series that I kind of wanted to read and anyways aside from that in this book this is a YA sci-fi fantasy adventure taking place in a world where the fae rank above the lowly humans and when you're a human you kind of got to keep your head low except if you're a faithy because you run into Nick member of the royal guard a night walker someone who can go into the dreams of people and he finds something a little bit different about her and tells her that if she doesn't take action that blood is going to spill. It sounds really interesting. Being totally honest, the thing that drew me to it was the cover and the hardback of it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot afford it right now though, but I did end up getting them digitally so that I could read them and support the author. I will hopefully someday also get physical copies just because I think it's beautiful and I would love to have a physical copy of these books. Like they are gorgeous. These hardbacks are beautiful. I want to learn how when I eventually publish hardbacks, how I can make them look that good because they look amazing. I also own the second book, A Queen Comes to Power. Obviously, I don't know anything about that because I haven't read the first book and I'm not going to talk about the second book when I haven't read the first book. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for coming to my TED talk on that. But I think that is all of the books that I have, including ebooks. The last thing I just wanted to quickly touch on were some of the pretty stationary kind of things I got. I got these notebooks at Marshall's. Look how pretty they are. Ah, they are so pretty. They are lined paper. I prefer to write on lined paper. They've got a little spot for the date and the paper quality itself is a really nice smooth texture. I think it's going to absorb ink very well without bleeding through to the other side and I think my pen's going to glide really nicely on top of it. They also have pockets in the front and I think that's going to be really good because I plan on using these for my business, Nightshade Publishing. I own an editing business. Technically it's a publishing house but I use it as an editing service currently. I have a team of editors working with me so that we can help you edit your books. So you can check us out on at nightshadepublishing.com. Also on social media at Nightshade Publishing everywhere except on Facebook. On Facebook I think we're just Nightshade Editors. My light died again. This happened at the exact same time the last video except yeah. The last thing I wanted to show you was this really pretty journal I got at Barnes & Noble. It is gorgeous. They call it a haiku journal. You can obviously do other things than just write a haiku in it. It is lined. Again, the paper feels really smooth. I have no doubt that my pen is going to glide over it perfectly. If you've never seen my handwriting, I write somewhere between cursive and print, a very loopy, fluid print. It also has a ribbon. I am a big fan of books that have a ribbon because I can get back to where I was working previously. I like using journals to keep track of my books and where they are at, either with characters, plot, revising plot, doing general edits and revisions. Then through the publishing journey, I also use the book to keep track of things. I just really like it. I like having lots of these journals on hand. If you know of anywhere that sells really pretty journals, hit me up. I'm always looking for more. That is my haul. I got five books six books recently and then these three journals I am ecstatic to use them again my name is Anna Renee I'm a writer here on the YouTubes where I upload videos once a week about fun bookish and writingly rated things up on Friday I will occasionally have bonus content before Friday I think I already said all of my socials you can find me on Facebook Twitter and Instagram at Xana's Books you can catch me on TikTok talking all things D&D and fan fiction at Witch Dr. Xana you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash books. You can find my editing services at nightshadepublishing.com. I'm also on almost every social media platform as Nightshade Publishing. Again, on Facebook, I think I'm Nightshade Editors. I'm really bad at using Facebook though, so like TBH, like I update there, but you're more likely to get a hold of me either through my website or on Instagram or Twitter. You can email me if you'd like at xana at nightshadepublishing.com. I think I've just about rambled on long enough for this outro, so 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye!